Hello crafty friends, I'm Lynn from Studio Kato and I'm so glad you're joining me again today. Today's card uses a super simple emboss resist inking technique and we're going to watercolor on top of that for a fun effect. I'm starting out with a panel of Canson Mobile 300 GSM watercolor cardstock and I cut that quite a bit bigger than an A2 sized card so I can die cut an A2 sized panel out of it later. I'm stamping the Folk Art Birds stamp by Pinkfresh Studio in Versamark ink on there a couple of times to get a good impression and I'll be embossing that with WOW Bright White Embossing Powder. Because we're embossing, I prepped my cardstock with anti-static powder tool to make sure the embossing powder won't cling to anything but the ink. Now I heat set that off screen and now I have three ink cubes by Pinkfresh Studio that will make a nice rainbow. All the colors will be listed in the description box below. And I'm smushing those down onto a laminated sheet of white cardstock. This makes just a slick surface and it's white so I can see the colors as they truly are. And I'm just uh, smushing my panel on there to get a fun rainbow color. Because I'm using yellow, magenta and a nice pool blue ink, these colors will blend and mix together and make all the colors of the rainbow in at least some areas. So I let that dry, I sped it up a little bit with my heat tool and then I can color over that with my Karen markers. You don't have to use these markers, any watercolor medium will do. Uh, you can even use the same inks you used to uh, smoosh down for the, for the background. But I like these markers, they make it really easy to color and they are very vibrant. As always, I am showing the beginning of the coloring process in real time, so you can see how slow I go. Now, I have to admit, when I start coloring any card, I always go the slowest and I speed up a little bit um, during the process because I get a little bit more confident and I know where I'm going with the coloring. I'm also only using three markers and I am putting the blue down where the blue in the background is, putting the yellow down where the yellow is, and so on. So I am just intensifying the color that is already underneath the image. By doing this, you end up with a super fun tone on tone effect. And with the white embossing, it makes it stand out just a little bit more. Now I chose to do the embossing in white because I was going for a really neutral embossing powder to make the color stand out. But you could also emboss this image in gold or in silver. Anything metallic would be really beautiful. I think I might make another one of these cards with gold embossing powder and some fall colors. I think that would be really nice as well. So yes, this coloring process is super easy and pretty quick too. And it's really all you need for this card. It's really the background that matters here. I'm not going to do too much after the coloring. I'm just going to do some die cutting later and add a sentiment. But really all you need is this background. Another thing you can do that is similar to this and yet completely different um, you could do the ink smushing, so the first step that we did, in darker ink colors, and then just paint over the image with water, and basically pick up the color there. That way you'll basically get the reverse of what I'm creating now. You will have a nice dark saturated background, and a paler image. Now I have to admit, I didn't quite know where to go with this card. I wanted to color this background and that's as far as my plans went. So I did struggle a little bit to put this card together. But I really like what I chose in the end. I'm going to do some die cutting to create a frame around the birds. You'll see that later. And this doesn't take anything away from the background and just 
puts the focal point or the birds a little bit more to the forefront. So I chose this scalloped circle frame die by Pinkfresh Studio and I'm framing that around the birds. I die cut that once from the background that we just made and three or four times from black cardstock. I'm just taping everything together. I am taping the inside frame and the inside piece together and then the outside frame and the outside together. And then I will just layer all the black circles behind the inside that we made. This will add a nice dimension to the inside of the piece. And because we're using black cardstock and it goes edge to edge because it's die cut with the same die, you will end up with a line of black underneath the focal point. And you won't see it when you look at it straight on, but when you look at it a little bit from the side, it will show up and it's a really nice detail. Now I'm just gluing the outside piece onto a card base with Barely Art Precision Craft glue. So it sits flush with the card and then I can piece in that middle piece. Now for a sentiment, I am using this Celebrate sentiment and it's from the Simple Sentiments stamp by Pinkfresh Studio. This is a stamp that uh, creates 10 sentiments and then the coordinating die cuts them out all at once. So I cut and stamped a bunch of those, layered three extra layers of paper behind each one so it'll add some dimension. And now I have a lot of those sentiments uh, left over to use on cards. And for my embellishments, I used the Pinkfresh Studio Silver Metallic Pearls. Now just gluing all of that in place with my Barely Art Precision Craft glue. And then, of course, we can move on to the matching envelope, which is really simple this time. I'm using some Claire Fontaine DCP 250 GSM cardstock and following the directions on my We Are Memory Keepers punch board to make an A2 sized envelope. I then want to stamp one of the birds in the lower left corner of the envelope. Now I'm all for stamp surgery and cutting up your stamps, but even I hesitate to cut apart a big red clink stamp like this. So I'll just be placing my envelope over the cling stamp instead of the other way around. Put a piece of folded over purple tape on the back of the envelope so I can adhere it to my misty door. And then I can just ink up that one bird. I'm using the same three inks as before and that will make a nice ombre effect. And then just rubbing away any ink that got on any of the surrounding parts. Now just to assemble the envelope with some Barely Art Precision Craft glue and that will finish up this project. I really like how this card turned out. Super simple but beautiful and bright nonetheless. I hope you liked this video as well. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to read them. You can find all the products I used in the description box below and on your way there, you can always hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of my videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.